and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're comparing all the different stock coolers you get with a Ryzen 2 CPU. So let's jump right into it with the first one, the biggest of the lot. This guy right here, this is the Wraith Prism. So this is an RGB cooler, as you can see it has a big heat sink there, it has heat pipes, four heat pipes. Uh, yeah, big cooler on top. This is RGB. You can control it as well if you really want to. And this comes with the 2700X. This is a seriously beastly cooler. This is the best stock cooler I've ever seen since I've started this channel. Then we go down to its little brother, which is the Wraith Spire here. Whoops, the daisies. This guy right here. So you guys will be familiar with the Wraith Spire. Uh, this has been around for a while. We obviously saw it with the last generation. CPUs, there's no difference here. This time it's coming on the 2700 and also on the 2600X. The 2700 gets the LED model, 2600X gets the non-LED model. Has a copper bullet or plug in the bottom there and a decent sized heat sink. So overall, this is a good sort of mid-sized stock cooler. And then on the bottom now, we have the Wraith Stealth, this guy. And this is what you're gonna get with the Ryzen 5 2600, which seemed to upset quite a few people. And for good reason, on the 1600, you got the Wraith Spire, where now with the 2600, you're getting the Wraith Stealth. So a bit of a downgrade there, which upset some people. Now this has a much smaller heat sink. As you can see, there's no copper on this guy. What's interesting though to me is if you look at the fan between the Wraith Stealth and the Wraith Spire, they're exactly the same this time around, the same fan on top. However, in the previous generation, if you look, the Wraith Spire and Wraith Stealth had different fans on top. The Wraith Stealth actually had a slightly larger fan with more blades. Uh, so that was interesting, so now they've just all got the same one on the Spire and the Stealth. So that's something I don't think a lot of people would have noticed because they look so similar. But yeah, a bit of a difference there. And I would say that's a, even more of a downgrade on the Wraith Stealth because the old fan, as I said, was slightly larger where this one is the same one you get on the Spire. But obviously it's a much, much smaller heatsink on the Stealth than the Wraith Spire. So with all that being said, uh, let's do a few benchmarks and see how all the coolers perform. So for this, I use the Ryzen 5 2600X. I thought this would be a good one because it's sort of a middle ground one. It comes with a 95 watt TDP and it'll give us an idea of what these coolers can do. So the first test I did was Cinebench. So this is just doing the multi-core rendering test. It's quite short, but it, it's quite taxing on the CPU. And as we can see, a decent difference there between them, oh, about where you would think they would all lie. You know, the Prism doing the best, Spire in the middle, and the Stealth doing the worst. But when we go over to the Handbrake benchmark, because a rendering test is probably the harshest thing you can ever do with a CPU. It really, really strains them. Uh, we see that, wow, there's a big difference between the Prism and the Spire. Almost 10 degrees there. And the Stealth just can't handle it. It went up to 94 degrees and it was throttling there. So it just couldn't handle it at all. However, most of you guys probably won't be rendering videos. You'll be playing games. So let's try Rainbow Six Siege. It's a very popular one. And as we see, there's still a bit of a difference there. Uh, a big difference when it gets to the Stealth. But between the Spire and the Prism, there's not that much there really. And obviously the temperatures are much lower because the games are nowhere near as harsh. And then F1 2017, we also see a bit of a difference there between them, but again, not as much. With the Stealth, it does get a lot hotter. It's a lot smaller than the other two, so that's to be expected. So, the Prism comes out on top. Wow, that was surprising. It's huge by comparison. It has a much bigger fan, and overall it's the beefiest of the three. But what was interesting to me out of the lot... I mean, we knew the Prism was going to win, but how well the Spire does, all things considered. Um, obviously, it is a lot smaller, smaller fan and all the rest of it, but it still does a good job. And this is a really decent stock cooler. And the Stealth was just, the 2600X was just too much for it in most of the tests. With the games, it was fine, but with Handbrake and that, it was just getting way, way too hot. But what about the noise then? And this was interesting. So the Spire and the Stealth had the same fan now, so their fan noise was the same. But the Prism has a much larger fan than the other two. And it has more uh, fins as well on the fan. But the Prism was the quietest by a decent margin. 
but I'll let you guys judge for yourself. So this was during the handbrake test, so this is like worst case scenario. And I'll let you guys hear all the different coolers. So there you have it guys, the Wraith Prism wins again. It's a lot quieter than the other two. I mean, the Spire and the Stealth uh, have the same fan, so their noise would be around the same, although the uh, fan on the Stealth is going a lot harder because obviously it's got a much smaller heatsink, it has to work a lot harder. But the Prism does very well, and the Prism is the uh, most quiet out of these three. Although, if you're gonna be really trying to max out the Prism, then that will change, but in terms of running a stock 2600X with them, uh, the prison is the most quiet of the three. So what do we make of these three coolers then? Well, the Wraith Prisms does a really good job. It's one hell of a stock cooler, that's for sure, and 2700X buyers are going to be really impressed by it. It looks awesome in a case as well. The Wraith Spire is decent. It does a good job, although the 2600X does push it quite hard, especially when you're rendering, but for gaming and stuff, it's just fine, and it's still a really decent cooler. The Stealth is quite disappointing, though. I mean, it'll be fine with the 2600 at stock speeds, but for people that were hoping of saving a little bit of money and buying the Ryzen 5 2600 and then overclocking it up to something like 4 gigahertz, 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz, you're not going to be able to do it with this cooler. You're just not going to be able to, guys. So you're either going to have to go into your local PC store and ask them, hey, do you have a spare Wraith Spy laying around? Can I, you know, buy it for like $5 or can I have it for free? And maybe you get lucky and they'll say yes. Or you're going to have to buy like an aftermarket cooler for it, like a 120 millimeter air cooler. Uh, or you're just going to have to, you know, settle for a quite mild overclock with the Wraith Stealth because, yeah, it's just really not up to the task. And I am quite disappointed now. And I think with the fact that the 2600X comes with the Wraith Spire Cooler and the fact that it has such good speeds out of the box, personally, I think now the 2600X is actually the best value Ryzen CPU I've tested so far. But hey, maybe that's just me. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think the 2600X or 2600 is the best value Ryzen 2 CPU right now? Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, because it makes Teddy's day. And I'll see you guys next time.